I heard about Ponce's tapes. Yeah. Why do you think she'd leave him behind? And that diary? Whatever it was, her commitment was wavering. That much is clear. So she was leaving clues? To help us? No way to know for sure. And the ocean's not giving her back. November 4th, 1974. At the outskirts of Barranquilla, Colombia. Contact with Big Boss successful. Zadornov posed as my professor, but Big Boss took one look and knew he was KGB. However, he does not seem to suspect me. To him, I am just a peace-loving student and another victim of the CIA. We asked him to drive the CIA out of Costa Rica. To him, this means betraying his country. His forces are smaller than anticipated. They drift from place to place with nowhere to call home. That provided us an opportunity, so we seized it. Zedornov offered them a plant off the Costa Rican coast to use as a base. As expected, Miller jumped at the chance. Although initially reluctant, Big Boss came around when Zadornov played him the tape. All because the voice on it sounded like his mentor, the boss. Naked Snake, the man who once saved the world from the brink of nuclear war. Awarded the title of Big Boss for his service. He later became a mercenary, abandoning both his title and his country. To him, that honor was steeped in the blood of the boss, the mentor he was forced to eliminate. Exceptionally charismatic, he possesses unparalleled combat and intelligence gathering abilities. His only discernible weakness is... her. This operation hinges on how effectively we can exploit that. Kazuhira Miller is Big Boss's lieutenant. Half Japanese, half American. He once served in Japan's self-defense force. Though he and Snake first met as enemies, they discovered a common bond and together built their private army, with Miller directing business and administrative affairs. He comes off as shallow, but his true intent is hard to read. I must be careful. All that is clear is his infatuation with Big Boss. With East and West fighting over its control, Central America is now the most contested region on Earth. CIA Central American Station Chief Coldman has developed Peace Walker, a fully AI-automated, fail-deadly nuclear launch system with which he aims to reignite the Cold War. Snake's new objective in Costa Rica is to prevent that. Zadornov's or should I say, the KGB's plan is to play the two sides against each other, turning the entire region red. Not one of the three parties realize they're all just pawns in Cypher's hands. Cypher watches all. Mother Base has developed rapidly since being established in the Caribbean Sea. They recruit more personnel daily, and already their mercenary services are turning a profit. Big Boss's leadership and charisma, and Miller's business acumen drive this impressive growth. Furthermore, joining forces with a faction of the FSLN has expanded their power even more. They have even commenced their own weapons development program. All is proceeding according to Cypher's will. I could not be more pleased. Snake's pursuit of Peace Walker led him to an AI modeled after the Boss's thought patterns. It was incomplete, but, somewhat ironically, making contact with Snake was the necessary finishing touch. Meanwhile, the scientist behind Peace Walker's locomotive control, Huey, defected to Snake's army. His presence has greatly accelerated weapons development at Mother Base. I failed to anticipate Coldman's madness, but nuclear war was averted. However, this was only after the boss AI on board Peace Walker sank itself to the bottom of the lake in what could be likened to suicide. The boss laid down her gun, choosing to sing for peace instead, and Snake, himself a gun, parted ways with her. In doing so, he reclaimed the title he once abandoned. He is Big Boss. 
Zdornov has been detained. Since this leaves my cover identity without a guardian, the Mother Base staff has taken me in. I am now better placed than ever to monitor their internal affairs. Everything continues to unfold according to plan. The developer of the boss AI, Dr. Strangelove, has also come to Mother Base. With her and Huey's expertise, they can now develop a weapon capable of matching Peace Walker. Development on the bipedal weapon is now complete. They call it Metal Gear Zeke. It stands there like some sort of mystical guardian. This soldiers gaze on it with pride and reverence. Big Boss has elected to arm it with a nuclear weapon. As an army without a nation, they seem to feel the need for a deterrent against whatever the world might pit against them. It is a dangerous gambit. Why do such a thing? Their nuclear strategy differs from the Americans and the Soviet Union. The superpowers deter attack by revealing their nuclear arsenals to one another. Snake and his men know that if they were to go public with this, the whole world would unite against them. Business would dry up overnight. So they do not plan on revealing the nuke until necessary. This ace in the whole approach is their idea of a nuclear strategy. Wielding a deterrent, all the while unable to reveal its existence. I wonder if Snake sees how vulnerable this makes them. Yes. Hijack Zeke? Yes, I did indicate that to be our leverage. But I cannot imagine his agreeing to that now. But, did you not raise them to safeguard your governance without borders? No, no. I have not forgotten. Cypher watches all. Yes, things are proceeding. But modifying Zeke has not proven easy. I am using Zadarnov to buy some time. No, I have not forgotten what you said. However... Well, forgive me for asking, but... This is you I am speaking to, isn't it, Cypher? I must. I will fight, Big Boss. The world must be ruled by a single will. To defy Cypher is a fate worse than death. As of today, I will be living here at Mother Base. Now my real trial begins. Zadornov was paying my room, board, and tuition, but he has since been captured. I told the man that with no more money from the KGB, I could no longer afford school. He bought my story, and when I said I would be willing to work, he took pity on me and let me stay. For some reason, Miller really pled my case. That was helpful, but the man is still a fool.